first thing we need to do is to open up the Project 2010 program. And to do that, uh, if you want to learn how to open up programs in Windows, then I recommend that you watch my Windows training videos. But for this video here and throughout the remainder of the videos, I want to go ahead and do it through the shortcut on my desktop. And if you want to put that shortcut of the program on the desktop, where all you have to do is go ahead and double click on it to open up the program, then come down here and click on the Start button. Come up and click on All Programs, and then scroll to and find the Microsoft Office folder, click on it to expand it, and then there's the project program. Give it a right click, and then in the shortcut menu that opens up, come up here and hover over Send To, and then go over to the next shortcut menu and click on Create Shortcut, where it's going to be on the desktop. Go ahead and click on it. Let me click off of it, and it'll put it right here. So all you have to do is go ahead and double click on the shortcut, opens up the program, there you go. Okay, for those of you who've used earlier versions of Project, like 2007, 2003, well, the biggest difference you're going to find every time you open up Project is that you're not dealing with toolbars or menus anymore. Well, maybe one toolbar, known as the Quick Access Toolbar. Let me go ahead and go over the uh, view, what you're seeing here every time you open up Project. By coming up here in the upper left-hand corner, I'll work from left to right, then from top to bottom. So in the left-hand corner, we've got the uh, green icon or logo, P for Project. To the right of that, you have what's known as the Quick Access Toolbar. It's called that because you can quickly access the commands or tools on the toolbar in a single click, like the Save command. Hover over that. gives you the pop-up. says Save. Go ahead and click on it. It'll save your project. And then over to the right of that, we've got the Title Bar. And every time you open up Project, it'll have a generic title name like Project 1, Project 2, Project 3. You can go ahead and rename it when you save it and call it like My Spiffy Project or My Construction Project, you know, whatever name you want to give it. And then to the right of that little dash there, you've got the name of the program. In case if you missed it over here, the green P, oh, I'm in the project program. You can always look up here and go, oh, I'm in the Microsoft project program. Then to the right of that, you have the Windows operating buttons here to work the window here to minimize it down, restore it down, or close out of it. You can learn more about that in my Windows training videos. And then below that, you have what's known as the ribbon. Now, the ribbon has all these commands, but it's trying to organize it into something that's coherent or makes sense. So, for example, you've got the task tab, dealing all with task, the resource tab, with all the resources that you'll use in your project, uh, the project tab, which has all the information that you want to get an overview about the project, like the project information, if you want to create or look at custom fields, the view tab, when it comes to viewing different parts of the project, then it's contextual related tab, specifically tied to what you have selected down below. And then you have the backstage view tabs called the file tab. So in other Microsoft Office programs, earlier versions, you had the file menu. Well, this is the file tab. Now, as you notice that when I click on each one of these tabs, it just changes the ribbon here. When I click on the file tab, it changes the whole screen and it pulls me backstage. The reason why it's called that basically is because you're working behind the scenes, like maybe to save the project which you can do from the Quick Access Toolbar. And I'll show you how you can customize that to add more commands if you'd like. Get more information about the project, uh, print the project, get more options to customize the project, the appearance of it, the display, when it comes to saving your project, things like that. Click Cancel. So that's the Backstage view. Now when you click on the File tab and you're back there and you're like, hmm, I don't want to be back here, I want to go back to the front stage, you can come up here and either click on one of these tabs to get back to the front, and then go ahead and work in your project, or let me click on File again. You can just click on the File tab again, and it will take you to the last tab that you were at in the front stage view. So if I click on File again, it takes me to the task because that's where I last left off. If I go to the Project tab, click on File, then click on File again, it takes me back to the Project tab. Okay, Go back to the Task tab here. And then below that, new to Project 2010 is the timeline and it'll make more sense once we start uh, working through the videos about project here. But basically, it gives you the start and finish date of the project that you're working on that you can go ahead and click and drag a slider that will put you at that timeline that you can go ahead and view the information down below, which is a great segue because what you're viewing down below every time you open up the project program, you're going to be in the default view known as the Gantt chart view, and you can see the name of that view over here, Gantt chart. Now, in this Gantt chart view, you have the left-hand side, which is known as the table, where you enter in the data, and then there's the split bar, and then the right-hand side, which is actually charting the data that you enter in over here. So to oversimplify here, if you got a task, you go ahead and you type in the task name, like let's say cleaning out the fridge. You've got a start date to start at a certain time, and it's going to take like uh, six weeks. So you type in the duration. It'll go ahead and it'll chart that over here in the Gantt chart in a bar chart format. So it'll start here. You know, if you 
pick the start date here. And if it's six weeks, it'll go out six weeks. And you can see the timeline up above here that you can look at, not the main timeline view, but the time scale. And you can actually see how far it's going along over in the chart view. And then over to the left-hand side, again, it's the name of the view that we're currently in the Gantt chart. If you want to change views, you can come up here and click on the View tab. I mean, that makes sense, right? I want to go to a different view, and we'll talk about the different views. Or over here, you can actually right-click on it, and you can see a list of some of the views here. You can go to More Views, but these are the more popular views. Again, the default Gantt chart, okay? Let me click off of it. And then finally down below, we've got the uh, status bar. You can right-click on it, customize it. It'll also tell you down here the status where it says it's ready and then also any other information that's pertinent to uh, what you're working on right now, which it says right now new tasks are going to be manually scheduled and we'll cover that how you can do it automatically as well. You can click on that and you can see that the other option is to automatically schedule it.